entitled The Blood Speaks. The Bible tells us this in Psalm 139. Most of us all know this. Psalm 139 verse 14 says that. For we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that wonderful? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that mean? I'm going to break down some things. I won't bore you a little bit, but I'll just break down something and then you will understand it at the end. Have you ever wondered, if you look at your skin, take just a look at your skin. I, I, I tried to put a little lotion on here this morning. But if you look at your skin, how resilient your skin is. You know how many cuts you've gotten on your body? Your skin has three areas to it. You know, for those of us who are in the, 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 the medical field, and I, I, I hope I will say it right, they, the first part of your skin, which is the surface, and uh, that we like to look at and admire at times, it, that first section is called the epidermis. All right, I hear some, some scholars out here. Then the one underneath that is called the dermis. And there is one below that called the hypodermis. Did you know that? Then when you get a cut and then the blood comes out there, but you can get those three layers out there for a particular reason. Won't get into all of that, but those, God has made us that we have three layers of skin. Mercy. That's make me, make me say, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. When's the last time you looked in the mirror and said, man, my, my. Yeah. Look at this. this huh? We should. Yeah. Well, ladies do it more than men. We're yeah. always in a rush to go somewhere. But now that I've discovered, established that about the skin, the brain. Have you ever figured out the brain? The brain, they tell me, Principal Evans, it has, it's weighed three pounds, just about. Your brain, I'm going to blow your minds with this, neuroscientists have done a research. And this is what they've told us. For me to just do this and wave at you all, for the musicians to just do that, just to do that, the brain has to tell some part of your body to do that, right? They said that the speed at which the brain tells it to do that, it travels at, neuroscientists are telling us this now, it travels at 268 miles an hour. So when I say wave, 268 miles an hour, that it moves. Now here's something that's gonna blow your mind. Every day within the 24 hours, we have some thoughts. Some thoughts we try not to think about anymore. But we all have thoughts. Your brain never stops working. Let me help you with something here. They said within a 24 hour period, you don't have seven thoughts, neither do you have 70 thoughts, you don't have 700 thoughts either. Did you know that within a typical 24 hour day, your brain generates 70,000 thoughts? Don't need to believe me. We'll check with what the neuroscientists have now put out. Can you imagine what's going on when you when you're sleeping? If I wonder why we wake up with a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> but the brain is powerful. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. That three pound organ can do so much. So you ever wonder why we need computers? Do you remember there was a day when we didn't store numbers in our cell phones? We stored every number in our head. And now that we've got the cell phones, we can't remember the numbers. Yeah. Folks, you need to start memorizing things. We used to be as kids, principal, where we had to stand up in front and repeat the whole 13 verses of the memory verse. And Lord help you if you missed one, because lunch was going to look different on Sabbath. But our brain is a powerful tool. We need to use it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise God. Then there's another organ 
Just remember the first one I dealt with was the skin, mm -hmm. then the brain, mm -hmm. and there's a little thing that's not even weighed a pound. It's called, it's a pump station yes, sir. called the heart. Yeah. And when I think about it, all I can say is, good God Almighty. Amen. What a powerful little organ that is. The heart pumps anywhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Beats. And to the little ones here listening to me, you want to do something cool? Put, put your left ear, put your finger near your left ear. There's a little flap here. Just put it right there and put your hand at your heart. And you're going to hear the single. You see? You can block out everything and hear your heart. Isn't that something? That's how God makes us. And, and on a typical day, on a typical, typical day, your heart beats 100,000 times for the day. 70,000 thoughts go through your brain. Your heart beats at 100,000 times for the day. Man, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. Your own adult was the skin, then the brain, and there's a little thing that's not even weighed a pound. It's called, it's a pump station called the heart. And when I think about it, all I can say is, good God Almighty. What a powerful little organ that is. The heart pumps anywhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Wow. Beats. And to the little ones here listening to me, you want to do something cool? Put, put your left ear, put your finger near your left ear. There's a little flap here. Just put it right there and put your hand at your heart. And you're going to hear the single. You see? You can block out everything and hear your heart. Isn't that something? That's how God makes us. And, and on a typical day, on a typical, typical day, your heart beats 100,000 times for the day. 70,000 thoughts go through your brain. Your heart beats at 100,000 times for the day. Man, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. Your heart, as small as this, pumps blood oxygen through the body to every cell that's in your body. Scientists have told us that we have check this out not three million not two million but we have 37 trillion cells in our body. So when this little thing called the heart which is not even a pound beats it's sending it all over. Throughout the day, the heart sends at least 2,000 gallons through your body of blood. And your body only have like six pints of, of blood or the most 10. And it's pumping all that stuff. Over. When you're sleeping, it's pumping. When you look at the mirror next, say to yourself, God, thank you for making me fearfully and wonderfully. The blood is a liquid type substance and the blood is made up of three components which is called water, salt and protein. Mm. We have what's called the, 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 the solid part, we actually call it the red blood cells. And then there's one called the white blood cells. Am I bringing it home to someone here? Sound like you in some sort of science class? But I, I, need, I need you to understand. Now you understand how beautiful this body is. And yet we spend the time to mess it up. The folks that will put stuff inside that should not necessarily be inside. Now let me talk about the blood. The blood speaks to us, especially when we have to go to for physical exam. The blood does speak to us, right? Yeah, yeah. We have different types of blood. All of you here have different types of blood. Okay, it ha we have what's called A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative. We have O positive, O negative. Well, we have all different types of blood, right? But the one that has O negative 
blood is a universal donor. Am I saying it right, folks? Yes. All right, I just want to make sure. When God took the time to create Adam and Eve, as this quarter we are looking at creation and the, the Genesis. Yes. Can you imagine when God went down into that soil? Beautiful, it was beautiful. She was beautiful to look at. Mm. And God didn't want to hesitate or waste any time because he didn't want to create that kind of temptation. So he brought them to the altar. Yes. Amen. And the evening and the morning. <laughs> but as a result of that, Satan was always angry and jealous of God. Because he was not a part of the executive committee to actually create man. Can you imagine if Satan were to create man? What a world we would be in. Huh? He now was angry. But what I noticed, God is so merciful. When he kicked Lucifer out of heaven, he never took anything away from him but where he lived. Folks like to think that Satan is this guy with his pitchfork and a long tail and a horns on his head. Absolutely not. He is a stunning beauty. It's just God never took anything away from him. The only thing he took away from you are not staying in heaven. Because you're causing havoc, havoc in heaven. So he was kicked out with a third of the angels. We are Bible scholars, we know this. And when he was kicked out... To our viewers, he was angry. And as a result of that, he was determined, come one way or the other, he's going to disrupt God's plan. Mercy. You know, you have some people around that just love to disrupt plans and create as much confusion as possible. They're, they're called Satan's. <laughs> but God had already had a plan in place. Should that happen? And you know the story well. Eve was just walking around beautifully in that thing. The sun just hitting her silky skin. And she was just admiring. And then this big flow, if whatever it is. In, 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 in um, the part of the Bible, they called it um, Leviathan. And in Isaiah, they called that. And it landed on this tree. God said, touch anything else. One tree of knowledge. One fruit was on. Why didn't she look at all the other trees around? The mango trees, the apple trees. But she saw that one tree. Why? Because he was in there with what we call a technicolor. And he could fly. Can you imagine you see this creature flying across heaven? And I said, why is it God didn't stop him? From even coming into the Garden of Eden. You ever wonder about it? I like to wonder. I, I, I'm, I'm what you call a critical thinker. I process things. But he didn't. And even he said, do touch anything else except that tree. And Eve, curious with this guy. And listen, when you read Genesis 3, he didn't just say, come in there and say, um, did God tell you not to do it? No, he had to like smooth, smooth talk. Hey, you beautiful. Mercy. 